Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. We praise you, Lord. My God is great. My God, my God. to be praised. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. I have a very special announcement. I want to start out with this right off the bat. I believe that spring is finally here. Amen. 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 It's great to see you all today. What a beautiful, wonderful crowd we have here this morning. We do have one official real announcement tonight at six o'clock. We are going to have a church business meeting. And it's going to be a wonderful time because we're going to fill you in on the finances of the church, but we're also going to talk about the future plans, the new building, and, and just tons of wonderful stuff to fill you in on. And it's going to be an awesome thing. You, you can come and be a part and see behind the scenes of all the workings of the church that maybe normally you don't see, but it's going to be a wonderful time. Then, when we get done with the business meeting, maybe this is the best part that you're looking forward to, is we're going to have a dessert fellowship back in the gym. And it's going to be a wonderful time with sweets. What we're asking is if, if you come, that you would bring some sweets with you, stuff that you can hold in your hands. You don't need a fork or a spoon, brownies, cookies, that type of thing. We're going to have milk, and we're going to have wonderful fellowship back in the gym. And speaking of wonderful fellowship, right now, we're going to get out in the aisles, hug necks, shake hands, high fives, and we're going to welcome each other here to the house of God.
Georgia, only to be released a few hours later. And you will not believe how he got the kidnapper to let him go. Trace Gallagher knows. Trace? He did it by singing, Megan. It really has become the song heard around the world, and police say it may very well have saved the life of nine-year-old Willie Myrick. Willie says he was in his front yard. He bent down to pick up some money, and that's when someone grabbed him, threw him in their car, and took off. Listen now to nine-year-old Willie Myrick. I didn't know what he was doing until he, like, grabbed me and he drove me off to East Point. He told me he wouldn't hear a word from me, so I ain't say nothing. Oh, he didn't talk. Instead, he started singing a gospel song called Every Praise. Well, he says the man cursed at him, telling him to shut up, but he kept singing for three hours until the man finally stopped the car and told him to get out. The boy ran to a nearby home, asked the homeowner to call his guardian. By that time, police were already canvassing the city and quickly picked him up, saying the song saved him. Now, listen to Willie sing the song on a local radio station. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. And he was saying, shut up. Yeah. Everybody's heard it. Willie McGr Myrick even got to meet Hezekiah. Praise him will set you free.
staff's going to come and pray with you. We're just going to continue to glorify and honor the Lord this morning. He is all power. We give you honor, all honor. Oh, glory, all power. We give you honor, Lord.
My troubles vanish Hearts are mended In the presence Of the King Can you just sing it with me? Trouble in the 
something right here this morning and as I saw that little guy in the back seat of that car in my mind he didn't know what to do he didn't know what his attacker he didn't know what they were after his kidnapper didn't understand what that was all about but he did all that he knew to do I know a couple others that did the same thing he did they were down in the deepest darkest part of a swampy dungeon when all of a sudden out of nowhere Paul looked over at Silas and said let's just sing a song let's just sing and let the praises to our God be awesome and mighty in this place where we're at in this circumstance where we're at I don't know where you are today I don't know what's got you down I don't know what that kidnapper's doing in your life but you may feel like you're in the dungeon or you're in the back seat of a car and that enemy's got the driver's seat. But I want you to know something. If you'll lift up some praise in this house this morning, he's going to dump you off and he is going to set you free. I believe the Lord is here to touch and minister to your need. The presence of the Lord, one touch. Hear me today. One touch. That's all you need. Oh my goodness. One touch. It don't matter if it's been a year. It don't matter if it's been six months. It don't matter how long you felt tormented and how long you've been sick or how long you've needed God to bring deliverance. One touch. How many of you know this morning He is here. He's here by His Spirit. Lift up that other hand right now. Let the power of God minister right where you stand. He can perform the impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give every need to you, every concern, every circumstance in this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sing it out. Oh, our troubles, troubles vanish, and our heart is mended in the presence of the King. here no musical instruments right here and it's peace peace sing with me wonderful peace coming down from the father above just voices sing it out Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray in fathomless billows of love. Amen. 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 Praise.
praise God. We do something in our service right now. Don't ever want to become routine or ceremonial. But I want those who believe with me that it is correct, scriptural, and right for us to pray for the good and seek the good of Israel. I want you to stand with me in the house and I want us to pray. As we're praying for Israel in this prayer, I would like us to include Nepal and all of the people who are devastated today. I know tragedies like this can happen all over the the world and we've had our own. But if we have the love of God in us, surely this breaks our heart for the people who are mourning, who are in grief, who are suffering today. Last Sunday morning when I reported to you the devastation, I announced to you that over 2,000 people had been killed and you gasped. One week later, while the count is still rising, there are well now over 6,000 people have been killed. It should move our heart. It should touch us today, and I know that it does. So as we pray for Israel, Let us pray for the people of Nepal. And let's pray that God keep us, our country, safe from all harm. Amen. Father, as we come before you today, we agree together and stand by faith on your word. Lord, as we obey your word and pray for the good of Israel. We pray over her borders. We pray over her mothers and fathers, her sons and daughters, and pray and seek her good. Lord, she's your chosen people. No matter what the politicians or the world reports or the news agents will say, God, we will stand with the word of God to seek the good of Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We lift her up to you today as your chosen and ask you to minister to them, keep them safe, provide for them, bless them at every hand. And God, we will be found in the end standing right with her alongside of the protective angels of God Almighty. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask you to touch the brokenness, the grief, the mourning, the tragedies in Nepal. We lift up these folks and ask you to touch their families, minister to the needs. God, especially those of the household of faith, touch them by your Holy Spirit and provide for them. Let this, God, be a way to to show forth, to stand in a new platform, to express your love to people everywhere, all over that country. Let the power of God prevail as the place to run to in times of trouble. We ask this in the name of Jesus and use us, Father, Use us in any way that we can be used to touch and minister to the needs of the people. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, forever giving you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. For it's never by our own strength or by our own words, not in who we are, but in who you are. Our faith is in a mighty God. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. As the ushers get ready to serve you this morning, I want to remind you of a couple of things. And one is that I want to uh, I want to let you know I, I there's a lot out there, a lot of folks out there, and in, in, in the modern kind of new age church that send out all kinds of articles and notes, and they try to tell us preachers. Uh, how we're supposed to do things in order to make the community feel warm and fuzzy and welcome in our midst at all times. And that we're, you know, they tell us we're not supposed to preach the cross. Well, we fail there. We're, we're, we're going to fail there. They tell us that we're, we're not supposed to do lots of things. But one of the things that I'd, I'd heard very recently was well, to be honest with you, I, got, I get anonymous letters all the time. You know, it's okay. I, I, you write an awful lot. You, you're busy. You're busy. And I appreciate you. 
but I never know who you are. Uh, so I'm assuming it's just one person and their name is anonymous. So, so what's up, Nam? <laughs> Someone sent me a, a letter and, and they were very kind, but they said, you know, hey, let me give you a little tip. People don't like the church asking for money. So I think you need to stop with the offerings and collecting, you know, in the, in the services. And maybe you should, you know, put a box at the back of the hall back there where people can go if they want to. So you're not going to get too many people in the world going to come to church if all the church ever does is ask for money. And uh, so just, just trying to give you a little help on how you can fill that place up. And I, I folded the letter, and I put it in my anonymous file. It's getting pretty full. <laughs> um, actually, to be honest with you, I, I tore it in half. <laughs> not because if you wrote it, I'm not mad at you for it. It's just that I went to the Lord about it. And the Lord let me know something. He said, hey, listen here, bucko. You don't think God uses the word bucko, but he did. He, he said, listen to me. You didn't start the giving, and you ain't going to stop it. He said, I have means and ways of blessing my people. He says, the ones that don't want it, the ones that gripe about it, the ones that don't like it, the ones that don't see its value or worth are those who have not tested me to see that I am God. He said, you ain't, you don't have permission. It's more or less what he said. You don't have permission to change what I set in order. Old Testament times all the way to New Testament times. He said, you don't have permission to change that. He said, my word says it best. Give and it will be given to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. And he said, what, with what measure you give, the same will be given to you. The Lord said, don't you dare cut off their water. Amen. So I'm giving you the opportunity to give to God. Give to God. Worship God with your gifts, with your tithe, and with your offering. Today, our offering is going to Church of God World Missions for Nepal. We're going to help the people in Nepal. There are several Church of Gods there that have been leveled, destroyed. Missionaries to Nepal that are suffering. A video has already come out of one, one of our missionaries who describes the devastation. And so I, I, when I watched it, I, I felt grieved in my heart that we needed to be a part. We can't necessarily get on, a, on a, a plane and head over to Nepal today. Maybe some of you will be able to be a part of rescue relief. But what we can do is we can help support those who are on the ground and those who are there. So we're going to support world missions today with our gifts. And every dime that you give in this offering today will go to help the people of Nepal. And as we do, we pray that God will use it not just to be an offering, but to meet a need that they have. Do you, do you ever pray that way? I want God to meet a need. I don't want to just give an offering and forget it. I want to pray over it so that I give the amount I'm supposed to and that it meets a need. And that's what I want us to do today. So as you give, I'm going to ask you to give. I'm going to ask you to give generously, hilariously, cheerfully, because God loves us cheerful giver a joyful giver so I want you to give knowing that it's going to go far away from here and not one dime will stay in Middletown but it's going to help people who are hurting today around the world let's pray Father as we come before you we thank you for this opportunity this privilege Lord to be used by you to minister to the hurts Lord over 6,000 that have been ushered into eternity and then the tens of thousands who've been injured, perhaps hundreds of thousands that have been left grieving. We ask you to use our offering today in whatever way will best suit the need that is there on the ground. 
We pray to be used in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, giving you the honor and the glory for the need met. In Jesus' name, amen.